Duty duties. I'm just happier than a pig in slop today because I get all this kind of stuff sent to me in the mail telling me about the end of the world. You know this 2012 thing that everybody's been talking about apparently on December 21st, 2012. Why, it's the end of the Mayan quote calendar. The reason I say quote Mayan quote because that is not the correct pronunciation. It's mine. And uh, I know that sounds strange, but that is the way it is pronounced. Another thing, that's not the end of the world. I know you wish it was, but uh, it's not because it's the end of an era. It's the end. Their calendar goes a little bit over 5,000 years. And uh, then it ends and starts all over, just like so many other things. It's a cycle. But I'm going to tell you about it anyway, and I want to tell you about it in a way that I think will make a lot of sense to you. But what I got in the, in the mail yesterday was this book from some church that wants me to come and explore prophecy. And I opened it up to see what it said. It said, I should discover the revelation in prophecy. <laughs> I love that. And then I look in the inside and it says, the Cosmic War of Revelation. Hot dogs. A Cosmic War. And then it says, The Collapse of Global Society will be the next week. And then the last week will be the Revelation's Judgment Hour. Scary? Should. But you know, the book of Revelations is interesting in its own. Sure, it's supposed to be all kinds of... of uh, predictions and things that are going to happen and they credit it to John. The, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that John. And they credit it to him figuring that what he would write would be uh, with love. And if you read the book of John, it is full of love and, and it was understandable because he wrote about Jesus and he, he wrote about the things that Jesus did and all that, but if you read Revelations, it doesn't read anything at all like John. Now, historians and really smart people, the kind of people that investigate this kind of stuff, they've all agreed that that couldn't have been written by John because it's a different style. Well, then the religionists, people like these people that sent this to me say, oh yeah, he was inspired. It was the hand of spirit that came through him. <laughs> well, it could be. I, I wasn't there that I know of. And so I, I wouldn't really know if, if that was spirit coming through him and directing his hand or not. Wouldn't really matter because I do know that God is love and God only has good things planned for you and I. Got another book here. This one is called 20 or 122112. This was written by little old Tiana Siam that, that works with us here occasionally. She's getting her own website though because so many people have been going in and asking questions and things. And it's a book that probably I think is the best book I've ever read about the 2012. And it talks about it. She says that ever so often the uh, the world changes and we get shifts and all that kind of thing it really explains it and i'm going to tell you something it explains it the way that it really is no garbage no fluff and no lies just good stuff that you can relate to sure we're going to have change and sure we're going to have all kinds of unrest and physical things happen but my friends, we always do. It's always been that way since the beginning of time. There's been nothing permanent but change. And that's going to keep up. Now i got another little book of paper that she encloses with her book. And uh, this is worth the $25 of a book alone. But it says, The Official Trend Analyst Report. And this was not done by some psychotic or psychic. And it wasn't done by a channeled guide, and it wasn't done by any prognosticator of any sign, nor an extraterrestrial communication. This was done by scientists all over the country 
that converge to put together what they thought would happen in the next millennium. That was, this is back four years ago. Incidentally, she wrote this book four years ago. So this particular report is said so many things that I look at now that was predicted that has happened. For instance, they predicted the unrest that's coming here now. This, this Occupy Wall Street is right in here. And a lot of other predictions that are scientifically based, based on what they know has happened and what they know is happening, not only in government, but in business and in religion and in the things that they know about. So it was put together. Uh, it's on the back of it. It's got a lot of accolades to the scientists, the philosophers, and the people who put this together. Well, she enclosed that with her book because it was a little more down. It was a little sadder, a little more depressed than what she is. And she says those things will happen, but it's how we handle them that counts. It's not what happens to you, it's how you react to what happens that counts. You know, sure, you're going to have your ups and your downs in your own personal life. You're going to have times when things aren't going the way you really want them to. But how do you handle it? How do you react to it? What do you do with it? And I kind of get a kick out of the thing. Remember Katrina that happened down south in Louisiana, down around New Orleans and all that? And everybody down there was saying, well, the government wasn't doing enough. And, come and help us and the government needed to do this and needed to do that and constantly help and hand out and so forth and so on. Well, they just weren't happy. Then we had a, a big disaster, a, a real tsunami type in Japan. Remember that? They didn't ask for help. They just started taking care of themselves. We also had one up here in North America. I'm not going to go into all the details. But they didn't ask for help. They started rebuilding right away. So you see, it's how you handle it and what you do with it that counts. I'd like to give you some of the details in here. Like she says that ever so often, about every thousand years, why things kind of cycle go around. It's like getting a, an enema for the earth. But she says what we're getting now, what's coming due for us is a high colonic. Well, you know she's right. Things are going to change. Sure, we know we're overdue for so many things. Uh, scientists tell us we're overdue for a volcano that's supposed to be around uh, the Yellowstone National Park and an earthquake there. I don't know if that's true or not, but they say it is. We're overdue for so many things that they've got to happen. Well, just because they happen now doesn't mean it's the end of the world. We're having real climate changes. We know that. We always did. We always will. The more the better. And how are you going to react to it? Are you going to be ready for it? Are you going to be spiritual enough to have a positive outlook and a good attitude for yourself? Well, if you don't, it's in here. I like the way she puts it. She says, politicians tell us that they'll take care of us and the religious fundamentalists Tell us Armageddon is fast approaching and confessing our sins will take care of us. NASA, relying on satellites and technology for their up-to-the-minute scientific information, says that nobody can take care of us. Well, some psychists tell us with their indigenous prophecies that we're all headed for an imminent pole reverses and we'll all wipe out our hard drives and clean and then we'll just will be finished. Well, maybe they will, because when their predictions don't happen, what are they going to do? You ought to get this book. Tell you what, if you really want it, you send a little donation in. We're at Post Office Box 1350, and I'll send you a few copies. Don't have a lot of copies left, but the copies we have, I'll be happy to send you. It's Post Office Box 1350, Surprise, that's the name of the town, Surprise, Arizona, 85378. Until next week, God bless you. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.